So, ever rewatch Pyramids on Mars or The Brains of Mobius lately and praise the writing, but you couldn't find anything about the writers Stephen Harris or Robin Bland? Well, in this video, you'll discover a lot more about these two and many others as I delve into the mind of the secret writers of Doctor Who. So I guess you must be an intrepid viewer with a question on their mind. What is a secret writer of Doctor Who? And you're quite right to ask. A secret writer, as we've discovered, is the writer who wrote for the story, but had a rather peculiar name, which is, as before mentioned, Stephen Harris and Robin Bland. They're only credited for one story each, or, in the case of one of them, two stories each. And as we'll find out later, it was for many, many different reasons. So, allow me to start off our journey with the end of the 1960s, namely 1968, where we come to our first secret writer, namely Norman Ashby, the writer of The Dominators. Now, Norman Ashby, who was he? Well, he was the pseudonym for the famous second Doctor writers, Mervyn Hainsman and Henry Lincoln, who wrote for the stories The Abominable Snowmen and The Web of Fear, and created this little-known character of Colonel, then promoted to Brigadier, Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. That reminds me, if you want to learn more about Henry Lincoln and Mervyn Hainsman, uh, go visit Will's video that's just come out. Anyways, the two wrote The Dominators, which is supposed to be the six-part serial that was opened on season six in 1968. But however, current script writer at the time, Derek Sherwin, rewrote their scripts, and in the case of episode five, extensively it seems, without their permission, which relegated a last-minute drop of their credit in favour of Norman Ashby, which is apparently so last-minute that the camera scripts that were used for the direction of the story still had Mervyn and Henry's name on. But was it right for them to use the pseudonym? And I have to say in this case, yes. Mervyn and Henry were right as their scripts would be messed with and without the permission with material added in by Derek Sherwin that they were not in control of. Imagine if you wrote a story and the script editor accidentally tampers with it to make it a worse product. You probably wouldn't want to put your name on. So yes, I think they were totally right in this case. Now, I shall take us forward two years and two seasons to the beginning of the 1970s into 1971 with our second secret writer, Guy Leopold otherwise known as the writer of The Demons. Guy Leopold. He sounds like an interested person, right? Well, I'm sorry to say, but it was actually the pseudonym for the third Doctor producer Barry Letts and further third Doctor recurring writer Robert Sloman, who had returned for The Time Monster, The Green Death and Planet of the Spiders before retiring from writing in 1974. These two wrote The Demons, which is the five-part serial that made up the finale to season 8 in mid-1971, which is adapted from initial ideas from a scene that was used in an audition piece for the characters of Joe Grant and Mike Yates in June 1970 for the casting of these two characters, which saw the two characters confronted by the devil in a church. Originally Skypoint writer and friend of Barry Letts, Owen Holder was meant to co-write the story, but instead this was given to Robert Sloman. But I want to ask the same question as I asked with Norman Ashby, was it right for them to use the pseudonym? And in this case, I don't think it was. I mean, this story is unlike The Dominators, which it had to be a last minute rewrite of names resulting in the pseudonym, but I can see why it was needed due to BBC policies at the time. Neither the current producer or the script editor could be credited for their work. But Barry Letts did co-write again for the Time Monster of the Green Death and Planet of the Spiders, but they just used Robert Slummer's name as he was already a proven writer at that point. Still, this means we can continue our journey to 1975 with season 13, and it seems that this year was fortunate to have two of them in the same year, and in the same season. So, first off, Stephen Harris, the writer of Pyramids of Mars. Stephen Harris, now, that sounds a bit more real, doesn't it? Well, sorry, he's actually the fusion of the current script writer of the time and prolific writer, Robert Holmes, and special branch and new Scotland Yard writer, Lewis Greifer, which this story was Lewis's last contribution to TV as he then took a post up at Tel Aviv University in Israel. So these two wrote the seminal classic The Pyramids of Mars, the third serial season 13, which was broadcast at the end of 1975, which is subject to many writing troubles for Lewis, who had a bout of serious illness before going to a subsequent surgery that delayed the initial draft of the story, and then, after all that, the story and scripts that he wrote were abandoned and rewritten by Holmes after Lewis took his post up in Israel, which meant he couldn't continue writing the stories for any more time. So, I still want to ask the question, 
was it right for them to use the pseudonym? And to this case, I'd have to say yes. Unfortunately, unlike today's capabilities of the internet, allowing us fast communication across the world, like with how the news series writers had to write from different places, it was harder to get hold of somebody from England to Israel, so the rewrite and therefore the pseudonym was best, so it meant that Robert didn't profit or push Lewis's story away. Since it was originally Lewis's to begin with, it still meant the story was still able to be used to become the classic it is today. Nevertheless, we continue into the new year of 1976, with two stories later with Robin Bland, writer of The Brain of Morbius. Now, I think you probably have to not really guess about Robin Bland. Robin was actually the fusion of the current script editor at the time and prolific writer, Robert Holmes, and the previous script editor and other influential writer at the time, Terence Dix, who I think probably needs no introduction, as, you know, he wrote Robot and many other classics. Terence wrote the fifth serial of the same season, which was season 13, which was broadcast at the beginning of 1976. Everything seemed to go well for Terence as the story was kept and it seemed that everything was going to be fine for the former writer until the budget came in. And Philip Hinchcliffe foresaw the expenses that were going to have to be used for the finale, and while Terence was on holiday and didn't have time to rewrite them, so he gave them to Holmes to finish, and once he saw the rewritten scripts by Holmes, he was a bit upset about the story, so he told Robert to use a bland pseudonym. But even with a bland pseudonym, was it still right to use it? Well, to this one, I think probably not. With the story already thought of by Holmes and Dix, I think it would probably be the better choice to have it credited by Holmes, as it was his rewrite anyways. It would also make sense in that way, because Robert Holmes would start crediting himself with his own stories, despite being a script editor during the next season anyways, so it could have just saved them a lot of time. Still, it's time to continue our journey as we get to 1978 and 1979 with our first returning and most elusive writer of which, Mr. David Agnew, the writer of The Invasion of Time, 1978, and City of Death, 1979. David is actually the collection of Graham Williams, the producer of the show between 1978 and 1980, Anthony Reid, the script editor between 1978 and 1979, and Douglas Adams, who was the script editor of the show during 1979 to 1980, but also you may know him for a little kind of sci-fi series that he did. Now, to loosen some confusion, Graham Williams and Anthony Reid were the ones that write The Invasion of the Time, the final story of season 15, broadcast in February and March 1978. But Graham Williams and Douglas Adams were the ones to pen City of Death, the second story of season 17, broadcast in October 1979. But I would ask the pseudonym question, but actually, I think, I think with both stories, I think yes in both cases. Both stories were last minute rewrites for the show, having to fit a schedule with both cases, and it was also with two people who had high roles in the programme, so the fact it would have been found out that the producer and the script editor would have written these two stories would allow a lot of problems to arise. Which does seem weirder when you find out that both Anthony Reid and Douglas Adams were originally going to have stories at the end of season 17, but alas, that never happened with Douglas's Sharder being cancelled. At last, it seems my journey is coming to an end as we skip forward to the year 1985, where our last script writer, Paula Moore, the writer of Attack of the Sidemen, comes into view. So, Paula Moore, who is she? Well, you may want to sit down for this one, because this is where it gets complicated. The only constant in these next few names will be Eric Sayward, the then script editor for the series, who was one of the main people involved in this story. But there have been reports that it was under a woman named Paula Wolseley, and then the unofficial fan advisor on continuity, and an associate with the producer of the time, John Nathan Turner, Ian Levine. Another constant thing would be that this was always going to be the beginning serial of season 22, which would be broadcast at the beginning of 1985. Apart from that, the full ownership is a question between the three people named before, as some sources say that Eric Sayward wrote the story himself, with Paula just taking the credit, due to the regulation stops and script editors to officially commission stories by themselves. Some other sources say that Ian Levine was heavily involved in the story development, Eric just wrote the story around his ideas, and then due to the aforementioned rule, Eric had to submit it under the Paula Moore name. And finally, some say that Paula Wolsey actually did write Attack of the Cybermen, with some of the plot ideas given by Ian Levine, but Wolsey, being an inexperienced with her script editing, had to have some assistance by Eric Sayward with the development and rewriting of her script, allowing the Paula Moore name to go on. This one, I'm rather glad that the pseudonym was used for the story, because of all the confusion of the three contributors, I'm rather glad that it did actually get something out, which was the resulting story of season 22. So after all that, we've gone from six secret writers to 13 unofficial writers. You know, it just shows the passion behind who, that even the people who had a higher hand of the program wanted to go. Although it does show that some of them didn't have the brightest or best chance, which is a bit of a shame. 
What more could be said if, say, Norman Ashby or Robin Bland didn't contribute to the show after all? But who's to say in the current era of the show that we might get another secret writer? Who knows, eh? Who knows?